You know, if there's one question I get asked more than any other, more even than why do we blink when we sneeze, that question would have to be, Mark, what is fun? And what does that mean when it's actually applied to photography? Well, today we're going to try and answer that question. So what's prompted this video is that I have just bought a new car. I say new, but that's a relative term. Think about it. New College Oxford was founded in the 14th century. The New Seekers had their heyday in the 1970s. Don't worry though, this is not a video about cars. It's not even a video about the New Seekers, although I'm sure that would actually make me the go-to YouTuber for the retirement community. Instead, I'm talking about the concept of fun and how my Mini is like one of my cameras. From the first moment that I test drove this car, the first moment even when I laid eyes on it, there was something that called out to me from the bottom of its oil sump, and that was an invitation to have fun. And I think that's because it's a Mini, and Mini is synonymous with fun. It came in number five in Top Gear's top 15 fun and frugal cars, and even ChatGPT tells me that fun is one of the defining characteristics of the Mini. And that got me thinking about what is my most fun camera. And it's a tough one. I have lots of cameras that I would call fun. From this quirky but somewhat fiddly Carl Zeiss Werra to this comically oversized medium format Fuji rangefinder camera. But in the end, I settled on this, my Olympus Pen F Digital. Just like the Mini is my everyday driver, this camera is my everyday carry. And just as my car gets me from A to Z, this camera gives me the versatility I need to get the photos I need. But any reliable car will take me where I need to go. And just about all modern cameras are objectively good in terms of the quality of the images. But how excited do you get about a Toyota Corolla? And when you think of the big players in the camera industry these days, is there really much to distinguish your Nikon from a Canon? I mean, I love my Nikon, but it's mainly because I love their lenses and I'm invested in the system. So what makes both of these fun, in inverted commas, compared to the myriad other tools that are out there that do other similar things and pretty much do them well? Well, before we try and answer that, we should probably try and work out what fun actually is. And I've consulted the dictionary for that, and there are two definitions. The first is something that promotes mirth or amusement, as in a picnic might be fun. The second is something that provokes a sense of enjoyment or playfulness. She's full of fun. And haven't we all known someone like that, or at least we wish we had? Um, actually, I think two of these, both of them are relevant. Uh, the first talks about your reaction to an object or an experience. The second one is about playfulness and usually attributed to a person. Since we're talking about cars and cameras here, let's stick with that first one. The idea of fun being the experience of using some kind of object or tool an experience that is produced from that object. And if you look at ChatGPT's definition of the defining characteristics of the Mini, you'll see it actually has a lot in common with the Olympus Pen F. So let's try and distill that down into some kind of salient shared characteristics that we can then use to provide our own definition of fun. Firstly, Fun is small. There's a reason that this is called the Mini. Uh, actually, this is quite a bit bigger than the traditional Mini, which is more like that big. I'm six foot tall and not clown enough to be able to squeeze myself into the cockpit of one of those. This is actually the Countryman all-wheel drive crossover version of the Mini, actually built on the chassis of a BMW X1 but still small enough to park. Well, kind of, I'll get onto that in a minute. But small is cute. Think Kylie Minogue, think Daniel Ratcliffe, think Daniel DeVito, small is cute. And we often use the term fun size when we talk about small things. When you buy things from the supermarket that are fun size, you think, or at least you tell your children they're having fun when really you just don't want them to grow up to be fat slobs. Fun 
is small. And small is perhaps the defining feature of this camera. In fact, it's the whole ethos of the Micro Four Thirds sensor format. The fact that you can cram great quality into a smaller package is a wonderful feature. Bigger than compact, smaller than full frame, it's a Goldilocks format that only suffers when you try and put it in the same class as its bigger siblings. Sadly, it seems that Micro Four Thirds is a waning format, and to be honest, I think the camera manufacturers are partly to blame for that. With the emergence of the iPhone, they've tried to position Micro Four Thirds as a professional option, which it is, but not in the same way as a full frame camera. The sensor size allows for better image stabilization, faster readout, greater depth of field. These are the things that make it great for video, but while Panasonic has embraced video, Olympus or OM System now has primarily situated itself as the option for still photographers, particularly wildlife. So far so good, but as these brands have evolved their market position, have you ever noticed what's actually happened to the cameras? They've got bigger and bigger to the extent that you're losing many of the benefits while still living with the trade-offs. To me, the real strength of Micro Four Thirds is the size and weight, and I'm not even referring to the camera body here. Most manufacturers have done a pretty good job of slimming down their mirrorless camera lineup, but you can't get over the fact that a bigger sensor means a bigger image circle means a bigger lens. And this is where Micro Four Thirds excels and the reason I got into the system. I sometimes travel for work and carrying a huge kit just isn't feasible. Now, this isn't one of those whiny whatever happened to Micro Four Thirds videos, I'll save that for another time. But what I will do is quickly show you how you can cover off on the most focal lengths. One Olympus Penaf camera, one standard zoom, uh, 24 to 64 equivalent, one 70 to 200 equivalent lens, one standard lens, um, about 40 millimeters f 1.7, and a tiny little ultra wide angle lens as well. You get the idea. These things are tiny and cute. They are the Danny and Kylie's of the camera biz and all the better for both my back and my creative opportunities. This system is small. The system is fun. Still don't believe me? Then how about this? This is a Panasonic GM1 with a 9mm body cap lens, one of the smallest interchangeable lens cameras in the world. And it's awesome. Expect a video on this sometime, because while the Olympus Pen F is in another class entirely, having a camera like this that you can actually fit into your skinny jeans pocket is a lot of fun and means you can always have a camera on hand. Fun is singular. ChatGPT talks about the Mini being iconic. It is recognizably different from other cars. Think about the Mini, you will not see a straight line anywhere. Now, lots of cars give in, they cave basically to the ergonomic imperative of having a circular dial for speedo and things like that. And you might see an occasional wavy organic line. Well, the Mini is organic too, but more Organic in the sense of looking down a microscope at a swarming petri dish of amoeba. There is not a straight line anywhere. Everything is circles. From the vents, to the buttons, to the door handle, to yes, the wheels. Even the wheels are circular. Okay, that's pushing the metaphor a little bit, but it's unmistakably a mini. You could call it retro, but that just means it's inherited a design language that is highly distinctive and instantly recognizable. It's customizable too. You can make a mini to suit your personality. I obviously didn't do that. I bought this mini secondhand, so that means I purchased someone else's personality. Fortunately, they went for the highly spec version without too much of the ugliness. There's no bling here. There's no union jack on the roof to give the impression I'm some geriatric Spice Girl. And the Pen F2 managed to avoid some of the stylistic excesses of some of its peers. Like the Mini, it also inherits some of that retro chic. It harks back to the original Olympus Pen F half frame film camera. It has the same beautiful black and aluminium trim and the box it came in even had that big gothic F 
font. In some respects, the digital version is truer to the original than the mini, since what is micro four thirds anyway, but half frame. This thing oozes retro, but not everything retro is fun. Would you really trade your iPhone in for a Blackberry? For something to be iconic, it has to offer something unique in the first place, or at least something singular, something that has come to define it because of the fact that it's actually good. And for it to maintain its iconic status, it actually has to be equally good. So yeah, the less said about the Yashica Y35, the better. Rest assured, the Pen F is good. Feel free to pause the video as we go through the specs here, but in the end, what you're getting is a modern, responsive, 20 megapixel camera with amazing color science and great versatility. Like the modern Mini isn't trying to be a 1960s car, this isn't trying to be a 1960s camera. You don't feel you're missing out. As these photos show, you have all of the affordances of a contemporary camera, just as I have the benefits of a modern car. Though, unlike my Mini, I have had people come up and ask me what vintage film camera I'm using. While perhaps not quite as excessive as the car, the Olympus Pan F also loves a circle. The top plate is full of traditional dials that actually work quite well, and even the front has a circular dial that is totally reminiscent of the slow shutter speed dial that traditional rangefinders had. And this is customizable like the Mini. Hopefully you're not going to recover the camera with Union Jack Leatherette, but one of the great things about the pen is that you can make it your own. It has all of the crappy novelty modes that cynical manufacturers have been using for decades to lure less discerning customers to their brand, but far more useful than being able to make all of your pictures look like they've been taken with a Holger is the fact that the front dial has been repurposed to allow you to instantly switch between your favorite JPEG modes. You can choose from the standard ones that are there on offer, or you can customize them to your own profile. And while I'm not a huge JPEG shooter, I find I do use it as a sidecar file to my raw images. I loved being able to give things a color slide look, even if I possibly did go a bit too velvia on some of my shots. Hey, you're not gonna know where that line is until you cross it. And if you think that some of my edits are a bit over the top, you should hear some of my tasteless jokes my wife makes me edit out of these videos before I post them. But I digress. Lately, I've reconfigured the color mode to give a more Kodachrome look, which is a little bit more muted and helps get um, gel with the classic vibe of the camera itself. I've also modified my black and white profile to give me a street photography aesthetic straight out of the camera so I can post directly to social media. In my case, I tend to emphasize the orangey red parts of the image, dial the black back a bit, and remove some of the grain that comes with the default black and white look. But it's up to you, and that's the point. You're making images that are iconic to you, that are imbued with your own style. Again, it's about allowing you to create a look that is your own, and that's fun. Fun is special, and this is where we get into Leica territory. Part of the appeal of a Leica is that it has that premium feel to it, and that's true about this Mini too, kind of. It certainly didn't start out that way. Uh, the Mini was built by Alec Isagonis in 1956 as an austere response to an oil crisis. So it was a small car out of necessity, and it blew up. I mean, not literally, but it became incredibly popular. It inspired the miniskirt. It became the car of choice for rally drivers. After the slow, bloody torture of Thatcher and the sad, whimpering, pathetic death of British Leyland, it ended up being taken over by BMW. And that's a good thing. I mean, do you really want a Mini that has the reliability of a Triumph TR7 or the looks of an Austin Allegra? The Mini became a premium product and all the better for it. 
BMW means that if you don't look at it too closely, you do get the sense that it's a luxury car. It has a panoramic sunroof. It has that ostentatious center console that screams at you in high definition. It has keyless ignition. You don't so much sit in it. It draws you in and serenades you with Kylie Minogue or Danny DeVito. And the Pen F is special too. It's not my best camera in terms of pure image quality, but it's probably the one I most enjoy using. It looks great and the build quality is second to none. It has a reassuring heft, feels good in the hand, particularly when you attach a grip or a half case to it. We spoke about size and this manages to be small without feeling like a toy. Unfortunately, like the Mini, this premium quality does come at a price. Sadly, when it was new, that might have been prohibitive for some enthusiasts. The good news is that the second-hand market still seems quite robust for this camera. So, if you have one or you're thinking of buying one, it will probably hold its value for quite a bit of time. It still has some of the highest specifications for Micro Four Third cameras, and it takes excellent images. But it's not perfect. While it doesn't have some of the plasticky parts of the Mini, it's not weather shielded. In practice, that hasn't been a problem for me. I've taken it all over the world and it's held up better than any other camera I've owned. It's held up better than my Nikon Z6 that I'm recording on now, which has had some issues with HDMI, memory card doors and the rubber grip coming loose. The Pen F is robust enough that I haven't felt nervous about taking it out wherever I've gone. I did drop it heavily on the ground once when I was in Liverpool, England, reliving some of the faded memories of my misspent youth and the even more faded corners of Merseyside. Well, the camera took a beating, but other than a couple of chips and scratches on the dials and top plate, it still works fine. I won't be trying to screw a filter onto the 12mm lens that was on it anytime soon though. It's been caught in more than a few rain showers and survived. In the end, why have a camera that is so precious that you're too scared to use it? The only real issue I've had as a problem is one that's common to lots of samples of this camera where the thumb pad gets loose and falls off over time. That happened in February while I was in Japan and while the camera is now discontinued, I was able to get that replaced by an authorized service center in Perth for just a few dollars. So it's as good as new. Fun is sensuous. No, I'm not saying sensual. Get your heads out of the gutter, you dirty little perverts. This is a camera channel. But what I mean is that it has a tactile, almost analog quality, a certain feel about it. When you get behind the wheel, this is a car that is fun to drive, like the Olympus Pen F. It's not that it's the fastest car in the world. It has a 1.6 liter four cylinder engine, but it is zippy, it is responsive. You feel while you're driving it that it is a more powerful car than it actually is. This one has a turbocharger, and even that has a kind of audio sensory quality to, about it, to it as well. It makes this little pew, pew sound every so often, like a little baby stormtrooper trapped in a box. Fun is sensuous. And that's very much part of the appeal of the Olympus Pen F. Like the Mini, this thing feels fast. Firstly, it shoots around 10 frames per second with the mechanical shutter, not up to the speed of a modern flagship camera maybe, but it takes ultra high speed UHS-2 cards to squeeze as much throughput as possible. It's not a bottomless buffer, but I've managed to shoot about 30 images in one burst on a decent card, which does give you a chance at capturing some fast moving subjects. The limitation kicks in when you set it to continuous autofocus. That's where this thing does show its age, slipping to at most five frames per second, less if you set it to focus rather than shutter priority, which you really should, otherwise you're gonna get a lot of blurry images. I rarely use continuous autofocus in the real world. Is that because my other good camera is a Nikon Z6, which doesn't have the best autofocus either? I don't know, but you know what? I'm not gonna replace it with a Sony. Yes, 
paired with this 20 millimeter f 1.7 lens it's a bit of a slug but that's the fault of the lens not the camera and it's a shame because i do like this lens but no matter what camera i put it on i find the autofocus too slow for street photography but the 17 mil f 1.8 lens that's on here uh, now is a jewel it's sharp is the right focal length for the street capturing enough of the environment without any wide angle distortion and it's snappy most importantly though it's fun to drive that doesn't mean it's the smoothest it doesn't mean it's the absolute fastest but it gets me the shots i need and that's because it just feels right in my hands i've set up a few custom profiles so it's easy for me to switch between a high shutter speed action shot and a low iso pictorial shot with five stops of image stabilization i can hand hold it in a surprising range of situations one of the problems with small cameras such as this little gm1 is that its tiny size creates a trade-off that's not true here it fits in my hand well and the physical buttons and dials give me easy access. Plus it has a very responsive touch screen. One thing I found myself using far more than I expected was using that as a shutter. I just look at the screen as I walk around and stick my finger on the frame where I want to shoot. Not that you always need autofocus anyway. In fact, some of the most fun I've had has been with manual lenses, including this little Lauer lens, which is a 15 millimeter equivalent. Many's the time I've just set it at a fixed distance, got in close and pointed the camera in the general direction that I wanted to shoot in. The best part is people don't even know that you're taking a photo. In the end, I can go out with this camera and enjoy the physical experience. At the same time, I never really feel like it gets in the way. Ultimately, it becomes a transparent interface with nothing really as a barrier between me and the scene. And that is fun. So how have we gone against the objectively godlike wisdom of ChatGPT's summation of the distinctive characteristics of the Mini and our comparison to the Olympus? Certainly the compact size is one of the first things you noticed with both and the small form factor is a large part of the fun. Also fun is that singular and iconic design that makes them different from other brands and products. In particular, the fact that they both hark back to their respective heritage while giving you the opportunity to make them your own. Both are designed to delight the senses. Whether it's the lights, the sounds, and the materials of the Mini, and its zippiness and agility on the road, or the dials and buttons of the Pen F, the sound of the shutter and its ability to capture the decisive moment. Finally, both devices have that premium feel that makes you feel like they're built up to a standard, not down to a price. They don't make the Pen F digital anymore, and I think that Ohm system are fine with that. In She's Leaving Home, the Beatles said, fun is the one thing that money can't buy. In the case of the Pen F, that might be starting to become true. And exclusivity, well, that could certainly be part of the appeal. But I'm not done yet. There are two more things not mentioned by ChatGPT that seem apparently contradictory, but common to both of these, and in many ways, to me at least, combine to form the very definition of fun. Fun is silly. It's pleasure without purpose. When Alex Isagonis built this car, he actually built it with an ashtray, but without a radio. Because really, what is more important in a car? And we have an idiosyncratic notion of what fun is. It's an individually perceived and conceived construct. It's solipsistic, if you will. For some people, watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is fun. For other people, being stabbed in the eye with a knitting needle is fun. I'm not quite sure which I'd prefer out of those. But fun is something that is highly personal, and it doesn't actually have to make sense. It can be highly impractical too. And there's plenty of fun stuff in this car, if we're talking about impracticality. First of all, 
that bloody center console. It has actual parallax error so that when you look at it, you could be five kilometers either side of it in terms of the speed that it's showing you. The tachometer displays mileage and trip data, but it gets washed out when you're wearing polarizing glasses. The lock toggle doesn't go down to close and up to unlock. In fact, it just goes in whatever direction you do, it does the opposite, highly counterintuitive. The same is true of the window mechanism and it's also true of the sunroof. In fact, all of those toggles give you the sense that you're in an aircraft rather than a car. And since I don't actually know how to fly an aircraft, that's pretty bloody silly. And yes, the Pen F is silly too. Having the front color dial is a cool retro nod, but you can't help think that it's over-engineered. It also has separate physical controls for editing the colors. I mean, how often are you going to want to go in and tweak the color calibration of your JPEGs? You could as easily create it in the menu using the touch screen and then save it as a custom setting on one of the dials that you access from the top. Having a jog dial specifically keyed to adjusting colors is overkill. I can't help but wonder if it's wearing these extra buttons just to show off, like some wannabe mod trying to convince you of his commitment to the jam or the who. You get the idea. Of course, the Mini is the prince of show-offs, literally given I can bathe the interior in purple. I mean, come on, it's a car, not a home theater or piano bar or aspiring YouTuber studio. Speaking of which, maybe I need to get some purple accent lights for the background here and get all Gerald undone on you. But look, the Pen F doesn't succumb to most of those excesses and manages to stay classy enough to not be cringy or draw too much attention to itself. And a little bit of silly can be endearing, like garden gnomes or chunky Christmas jumpers with reindeers on them. Obviously, there is a line, but haven't we all dressed our dogs in clothes or stood opposite everybody in a lift and just stared and smiled at them? No, if you haven't, then you're not fun. But fun doesn't have to be impractical. Fun can serve a purpose. It can enhance the outcome of the purpose or the experience of achieving that purpose. And that brings us to our final characteristic of fun. Fun is serious. This is actually a practical car. You could fit five clowns in here. I reckon six if you put John Wayne Gacy in the ashtray. But I digress, fun is about an optimized experience. Even that stupid center console does serve a purpose. It was there to help the navigators when there was rally driving going on. These days it's mainly there so that your wife can tell you that you're driving too fast and then you give a very long description of actually it's parallax error and I'm not driving too fast, it's simply your interpretation of the dials that is wrong. But fun is serious, fun serves a purpose. This car serves a purpose for me in that it takes me to work and back and even better, I enjoy using it. And in the end, this is a serious tool designed for a serious job, even if it's used by a complete fool like me. In fact, the word fun comes from the old English word beffon, which is to make fun of someone. In that sense, I'm very fun. It's just a pity that there isn't much attention paid to the concept of fun. Flicking through the pages of the Dictionary of World Philosophy takes you directly from Frankfurt School to God without any fun in between. And that's a shame. After all, wasn't it that great philosopher Miley Cyrus who said, life is all about having a good time. Look, I'm not completely subscribed to the simplistic notion of fun being pleasure without purpose. Sure, no one's expecting you to have a riotous time bagging your broccoli in the supermarket, but that doesn't mean shopping can't be both fun and purposeful. Similarly, it doesn't mean that every useful tool or purposeful activity is going to be fun. Some of the most optimized experiences are so seamless that they're barely registering with us. Neither the Mini nor the Pen F are perfect, but if they were, maybe they'd be boring. 
The fact that the Mini Countryman is a little bubble box on the all-wheel drive X1 chassis means you get all of the benefits and compromises of a crossover vehicle, including having the turning circle of a camel train. The Pen F is full of compromises too. With its smaller sensor and quirky autofocus, its love of dials that means that you can't put the on-off switch anywhere other than the top left of the camera, which means you can't operate the camera one-handed. But these aren't just the limitations you learn to live with, they are the qualities you come to love. The minor annoyances slip into the background, but we can still occasionally be surprised and beguiled by some of the unexpected whimsy that the camera offers. It's a serious tool for a serious job, but it stimulates my creativity. And after all, it was Einstein who said, creativity is intelligence having fun. And while not quite the intellectual heavyweight that is Miley Cyrus, Albert does make a good case, relatively speaking. And yes, that was a really bad pun. But that's what fun is. It's the little things. It's this little thing. And all the S words that seduce and surprise us. This small, singular, sensuous block of knurled magnesium and electronics manages to be both silly and serious at the same time. And in that sense, very special to me. Later.